Hey, photo world, welcome back to another episode here on TakingTalkPics.com. This is another episode from the former podcast. Please subscribe, hit that notification bell, and join the email list. Let's get to that 1,000 subscriber marker so that way I can add a new video every single week. Enjoy. Photo world, are you getting great resources from Take and Talk Picks podcast? Head to the website, Take and Talk Picks. Dot com. From there, please click on the iTunes button. That'll bring you to iTunes podcast page for Take and Talk Picks. I would love to see your support and five-star rating. Also, please subscribe at TakeandTalkPicks.com for a chance to win an iTunes gift card. Hey, Photo World, Rob Kruger here with TakeandTalkPicks.com. This is episode 30 featuring Angie McMonagall. You have this idea of like what you want to do and then random stuff pops up and kind of veers you in a different direction that you never considered and it's good. Hey, Photo World, today's featured guest is Angie McMonagall. Angie, are you ready to rock? (laughs) Sure. Absolutely. That's what I like to hear. Angie is an award-winning fine art photographer based out of Chicago, Illinois. Her work has been internationally exhibited, and she has been published in Our Photo, Folio, Stark Magazine, F-Stop Magazine, and National Geographic, just to name a few. Angie, welcome to Take and Talk Picks. Hi. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. For sure. I've given Photo World a very brief overview about you and almost nothing about your business, actually. Could you go ahead and introduce yourself further and tell us about what you're doing? Sure. <laughs> I, I guess I am consider myself kind of fine art, somewhat commercial photographer. Uh, the commercial shoots that I've done have kind of stemmed more on the, the fine art end, where I've been hired to do, create, hired to create artwork for, for locations. Um, one was a hotel. Uh, recently, I just did a shoot for a desk company based out of LA and they wanted me to photograph their desk in architecturally interesting locations around Chicago, but have them feel more fine art like as opposed to, you know, just an ad or something like that. So um, I guess that's my my main focus. And, you know, I, I tend to do this for myself for fun and, you know, commercial stuff comes up. That's great at this time. Um, I still have, I have two little kids, so I don't put as much time into marketing as I'd like to and mm-hmm. getting the jobs that I'd really like to get, but in a couple of years. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> when things settle. Yeah. When they're both in school all day and I have a little more time. <laughs> well, Take and Talk Picks is all about sharing your story as a photographer and what you're doing with your business. And I think it's already a great start, you know, introducing that you got a family that you're focused on right now. But I like to get the inspiration flowing for Photo World out there. So Angie, could you set us up on that track and you know, give us a mantra or a quote that you tend to live by or run your business by, something that keeps you motivated. Um, I definitely kind of have a mindset of less is more, whether that's um, photographically or equipment-wise, um, things like that. If you look at my images, you kind of see that there's a minimalism and simplicity to the work. Um, I recently came across this quote by Georgia O'Keeffe that, that I love. Um, it, it, is, it is only by selection, by elimination, and by emphasis that we get at the real meaning of things. And if you look at, you know, like I mentioned, if you, I don't know how much of my work you've looked at, but if you look at the architectural stuff um, in particular, a lot of it is very um, selective. Like I'm selecting certain portions of the architecture. I'm rarely showing the whole thing. I'm eliminating a lot of what I find distracting or um, what doesn't really get to the point of what I'm trying to make with, with the images. I guess the point is to try to emphasize what it is that, that I'm photographing and kind of get at the essence of, of what that is. So, you know, I think her quote, she put it more eloquently than I ever would, <laughs> um, gets kind of at the heart of how I photograph. Yeah. And I mean, less is more anybody that knows me. I'm pretty minimalistic when it comes to shooting and equipment. Um, really only shoot with one camera, one or two lenses and, leave it at that. I think it, it helps create me creatively to have less stuff that I'm thinking about when I'm out there that I can focus on, on what I'm shooting as opposed to what's in my camera bag and what I should be pulling out and swapping in and out. So yeah, nothing wrong with that. I mean, less is more kind of boils down to being able to niche down and focus in on what you're doing. And there's a, there's a good acronym that I've heard over and over uh, from other mentors and business owners that I look to and what they're doing. And they say, kiss, keep it super simple. You know, it's just 
keeps everything in line. Like you said, just a couple lenses in the body, you're limited, but then you can master what you have in your bag that way. So that's really cool. So Angie, what sparked your interest in photography enough to pursue it as a career? That's hard to say. I, I don't know that I really have a good answer for that. I, I don't come from an artistic background or family for that matter. Um, my college degree is in medical technology, so nothing at all creative. It's a very, um, very detail oriented. <laughs> Big 180. And, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just very different than looking at things artistically. But the odd thing is, is like shooting for a while now and looking at my work and reviewing things and seeing how I shoot and how detail oriented it is. It's interesting because my profession, medical technology, was super detail oriented, and so is my work. And it took me a long time to make that connection, but that's like your personality coming out in what you do, whatever that may be. But how I got into photography, I don't know. It was something I'd always been interested in as a kid. Like my stepdad would have Nat Geo magazines, you know, lying around, and I remember flipping through those and thinking, like, how amazing it would be to be a photographer and be able to travel the world and shoot the way that they do and the things that they do. Um, you know, I always wanted to take photography classes, but, you know, super practical family. <laughs> it's like, no, you need to take classes that are going to get you a real job. So that just got put off. I never even got a real camera until after college. Um, and then just slowly taught myself from there. And I never looked at it as I was going to turn this into a business. It was just a hobby. It was something I really liked to do. And, you know, as with anything, things change. The longer you do it, you get different ideas and, you know, you get more excited about it and want to pursue it in different ways. So that's... I like that things change the longer you do it. So photo world, if you're feeling stuck, there's hope. Just keep going. You know, <laughs> that's great. There is. I've been at this for a long time. <laughs> I got my first camera in 2011, so this is not a quick process oh, for that's me. that's not that long. <laughs> well, Angie, you feel like it's a long time. I don't think it's that long. But during that time in business, in running your own artwork out there in the world and pursuing those commercial jobs, things of that nature, we have ups and we definitely have downs. And I think we learn from those failure moments. Can you recall a time where you had to learn the hard way and you're better for it now? I mean, there's always things that you're learning. I remember early on, um, I can't remember how many years ago it was. I was doing this shoot. It was like an event shoot. There was a number of years, like five or six years where I did portrait work. So I was doing a lot of events and things like that. It was indoors and it was getting, you know, kind of dark and, and I kind of forgot to change my ISO like up it. So things were just like, they didn't look great. Thank God they weren't paying me <laughs> like, now that I think about it, but just stupid things that you forget technically when you're first kind of starting out things like that on a more artistic end. Uh, one of the things that took me a long time to learn was to kind of stop caring so much, what what other people thought of what I was doing, you know, trying to shoot to get all these likes on Facebook or, you know, get approval from a certain subset of the photographic world. You know, it's nice to have approval and have people like your images. Of course we all want people to like what we're doing, but I just kind of got to the point where I just stopped caring and started focusing on what made it fun for me and made it interesting and exciting for me to pick up the camera and go out and shoot. So uh, to me, artistically, that's one of the lessons that I think people need to get to that point. Don't jump on the trends. Don't care so much. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to do. But... There's a there's a nice balance between, you know, researching what's going on in the world and trying to keep up with it to to feel like you have a place in it. But at the same time, you got to do your own thing because if you just keep conforming to what everybody else is doing, you won't ever stand out. So it's it's not a bad idea to, to ignore it. You know, ignorance is bliss. You know, that's all true. So, <laughs> at times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what would you consider to be your most important practice in your photography? Is there a particular piece in your workflow on the post-production or just in the way you're shooting, how you approach it, or just your interaction with clients? Something along those lines that stands out as being the most important. Um, for me, when I'm going out to photograph on my own for myself, I'd say the most important thing is to spend a decent amount of time with whatever it is that you're photographing. For me, it's buildings. So, you know, every building is different, just like every person <laughs> is different, you know. Some you can spend more time with than others. They have more interesting, um, you know, ways to approach them. Like it, Frank Gehry, anything by him. Like the Walt Disney Concert Hall, I was recently in L.A. shooting. I mean, that's literally a building I could probably photograph all day long. But I don't generally spend less than 30 minutes photographing something. And I try to 
kind of have an understanding of what it is that I'm shooting before I go there. Like I'll, I'll research my subject, you know, know, know who the architect is. Um, if there's any interesting history or, you know, sometimes look at what other photographers have shot just as a starting point. You know, I don't want to miss a perspective or at least gives like a, a jumping off ground to kind of see sometimes. Um, I don't always do that aspect of it, but uh, it doesn't hurt, especially if it's a location I'm traveling far to be to and can't go back to tomorrow if, if I want. When I work with clients, it's knowing what they want out of the project, you know, having a conversation with them and trying to get a good understanding of what they're hoping to get from me and how, how they want the product, you know, the project to come out in the end. So it kind of, it depends who and what I'm shooting for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? But I mean, I feel like it kind of all relates to the same thing and Photo World, hope you're getting this too. I'm pulling away, doing your homework and being prepared for what's going to come. Of course, you're not always going to be ready for every situation, but preparing as much as you can, this is going to make it that much easier. I really like that approach to, to going into your shoots. We have a wide range of photographers listening, Angie. Could you please share with Photo World one thing that you think would lead to growth and success in their particular business, regardless of their current level? Like I mentioned earlier, keeping it simple, minimizing what it is you go out with. Um, I know it's hard to do, and photographers love gear. Most of them love gear. Too much sometimes, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, like want tons of equipment, you know, every new camera and lens. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's fun to play around. But I think it would be good that if you're going out on a day, pick one lens and just use that. Like kind of limit yourself each time you go out to push yourself a little bit more creatively to see things you know, a little bit more, it, I guess it just makes you have to think a little bit harder to push yourself because you can't swap out the lens. You have to move yourself or you have to put yourself in a different position or look at things in a different way than if you ha have an easy fix of just trading on the lens to get what you want immediately, you know? Yeah. Put yourself in a limited position, keep things simple that way. And you're going to be able to learn and grow from that. So I really think that's a good idea. I don't know about other wedding photographers out there. I use zoom lenses for my weddings and I always tell my assistant when I start a new wedding, I'm like, remind me to put the 50 on at some point. Cause I always forget to use my 50 millimeter and it's a great lens to use for what I'm doing. And it's just that same thing. You get stuck in what you're doing and you have the fix right there in a zoom or whatever, you know, so I can relate to that. I hope photo world's relating to it. Angie, you said it kind of just happened and you feel like it's been a while, but 2011 isn't that long ago. I actually meant 2001. Sorry. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. That that clears it up a little bit. 14 yeah, years yeah. as opposed to four. All right. You, you almost lost 10 years there on it. So <laughs> I know. Awesome. Okay. 2001. That's a yeah. solid, solid start to a career here. That's not bad. All right. <laughs> so in your career so far, have you had an aha moment, something that stands out that just hit you as, you know what, I'm going to try this. And once that happened, things started to change in your photography or your business. I can't say that there's one moment where things kind of clicked. You know, I think there's like a series of small moments that lead up to like things kind of making sense for, for you or for me, they did. Um, when I started, I, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I, I just knew that I liked the more fine art type of photography and I, I was shooting films. So everything was black and white because I was developing and printing myself. Um, but then when I switched to digital and right around that time I had kids, all my friends were having kids and I kind of got sucked into this like whole portrait like world for five or six years. And that's all I shot. And I kind of lost like the joy of it, like the fun of it. I, I I personally, just for me, don't love photographing, you know, people. I know that sounds really antisocial. Um, I don't mind on occasion doing portrait sessions, but I don't like doing it as a, um, as like a career. That's not what I want it to be. That's not what I want photography to be for me. So after about five or six years of doing that, I decided to do like a 365 project. You know, I'm sure everyone's heard of that. Mm -hmm. And the only restriction I put on myself was no photographing people. I was trying to figure out, you know, what it was that I like to do and getting back at that. And um, there was, I remember this one time I was out photographing at the Lincoln Park Zoo, um, that pavilion. I don't know if you know that pavilion at Lincoln Park on the, by the South Pond. Mm -hmm. I was photographing there and it was one of those moments that, um, you know, like I've mentioned, kind of limit yourself and, and stick with one thing and, and focus on it and try to see it more creatively. This was one of those times where I didn't have a lot of time, but this is where I was photographing 
and I was going to try to photograph it in as many ways that I could. Um, and I had like this moment like, oh, look at how much more interesting I'm seeing things here by spending time instead of just walking the streets or walking around looking for something to jump out at me. Because um, when I would do that, things wouldn't, you know, you'd see an interesting thing here or there, but it wasn't cohesive. It didn't really make sense. It, it, it was just okay. It was like brushing the surface of what was interesting. So it was just this aha moment. And I've read this, I don't know how many times, you know, um, you know, focus, mi minimize and, you know, like limit yourself. And I spent so long just rejecting that, like, no, I'm going to miss something if I don't take all my lenses. I'm going to miss something if I only photograph one thing today or if I only look for one thing today. In that one moment when I was photographing that, and that was in early 2012, it was one of those moments where I remember being like, oh, this is what everybody's talking about. This is why you restrict yourself. And after getting in the habit of doing that for the last three years, I've come to understand how it is that, that I see things because I'm consistent in doing those those things. And, you know, you start noticing these trends and, and, and things from one shoot one day to the next. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. And I, I thought something was funny in there, about, about, uh, sorry, about being antisocial. <laughs> when I started doing photography, I liked nature because it didn't talk back. So, I mean, that was my reasoning right. all the time. I was like, I just don't want to deal with people. Uh, I mean, I'm a wedding photographer now and I love doing portraits. So uh, when it all changed, I don't know. But uh, there's something about being with you and your gear and doing your pictures that is a totally different realm than a wedding photographer or a portrait photographer and even photographing, you know, the city and how it's put together and seeing it differently is totally different than landscapes and macro. I mean, there's so many options out there, photo world. So keep it simple on whatever you're doing and go look at it similarly, because you're right. It takes a long time hearing it over and over focus, be simple, simplify your bag, you know, things like that. And it takes forever until you finally try it and then it works. I mean, that, that's that's a fun moment to have. And I think I'm still waiting for mine. So we'll, we'll see. <laughs> I think you have to be like in that mindset. It's funny. Like you have to be ready to want to do that and be okay with missing certain things to get something else out of it. I don't know. It takes took me a long time. <laughs> I struggle with it sometimes. Well, Angie, I think similar to the aha moment, we don't have just one of these but can you bring us to a time and tell the story of when you had an I made it moment as a photographer? Maybe you got a thousand likes on Facebook or something and it just felt good or you got that publication and you were waiting for something like that in your life. You know, something bring us to that story of what what happened. Break it down for us. You know, I don't know that I even still feel like I've made it. I don't know what making it is. You know, you have these ideas in your mind of little steps along the way, things that you would like to happen. But Sometimes when they happen, you're like, okay, but there's still this to try to attain. Um, I, I guess last year was one of those moments where it, it felt like, okay, this is great. This is amazing. This is like a real job. Um, last year, Starwood Hotels, I don't know if you, I'm sure you've heard of the brand, uh, the Limeridian brand of the Starwood brand. Mm -hmm. um, there are I think it's her, um, let me think of what her title is. She's in charge of um, like placing art in the hotel, the Limeridian brand hotels in the world. So they had purchased a few prints of mine for the Oprah Hotel that they were opening here. And um, a couple months after that happened, I got an email from her and she was asking if I'd be interested in going to Paris to photograph um, the city for artwork for the hotel's um, like the corridors in the hotel. It's, it's a really big hotel. I think there's over like a thousand beds and there's nine floors. So um, what they wanted me to do was photograph uh, Aaron Deesman's one through nine in Paris. They're like nine, their neighborhoods are broken up. They're called Aaron Deesman's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of like how we have Roscoe Village and Wrigleyville and Gold Coast, whatever. So they wanted me to photograph one through nine, um, Aaron Deesman's one through nine, one for each floor of the hotel to create artwork for the corridors in the hotel and to create some artwork for the brand to use for advertising and things like that. So it was a huge job and like a dream job because they were hiring me to create images that I would create on my own being there. There was very little direction. It was 
all they said to me is make it feel like a journey through Paris. That was it. <laughs> you know, so I had a lot of freedom and to just go shoot the way that I shoot in the way that I see. And they would choose the images they wanted from the project for their hotel. So that was one of those moments where you're like, okay, this is, this is awesome. Can I get a job like this every year? <laughs> you know? Right. Um, so yeah, that that's probably the biggest, you know, like, yay, I did it moment. You know, I, there's other ones that have come up along the way that are, you know, different and, you know, a little bit smaller maybe, but that's probably the biggest one. <laughs> and like you said, you know, it's not the end all. It's great. I achieved this. What's next? Yeah. Do you have anything in the works that you're looking forward to coming up? Um, I mean, I have like this year, I have a couple of exhibitions coming up. There's one uh, or there's actually two in July here in Chicago. And then I'm going to be in a larger group exhibition with our photo folio in um, September in Arizona in Gilbert, Arizona. And um, that one's going to be exciting because it's with a lot of um, people that are uh, other photographers that I really respect and, and admire. So it will be amazing to be part of that show like little old me next to these people who are hugely known in the fine art world of photography so I'm excited about that that's very cool angie during your photography career so far can you recall the best advice you have ever received oh my god that's a tough question <laughs> i might have to think about that one for a while yeah i don't know um i guess i did this portfolio review with brooks jensen a year or two ago he just, he actually gave me the advice that I should look around and look for places where my work fits to not, you know, concern myself so much with that whole gallery world, which is something that to me feels like the end all be all you kind of made it situation for a fine art photographer. And, you know, he just gave me the advice, like, open your mind a little bit more to other options for your work getting out there and don't restrict yourself to that being the only way to be a successful photographer. So I guess just staying open to other ways of getting your work out there. Staying open to other ways of getting your work out there. I love that. That's awesome because we kind of get stuck in these little, you know, we have our blinders up. This is working. We're going to keep pursuing that. This is what we want, or at least what we think we want. But the second you let your guard down, you start to see, little opportunities you didn't know about, or you met somebody who there's an interaction or connection there in that network that you weren't expecting. So it's okay to let it, let it just kind of come at you, right. You know, and let life happen a little bit. Yeah, exactly. And not get too hung up on being rejected <laughs> you know, from that place that you thought you needed to be at. And, you know, right. it may come someday, but in the meantime, there are other things other opportunities and other things that, that are good, you know, that, that can move you along in, in a different way. And it may not necessarily be the way you thought you were headed, but it could be the way that should be what's working. You know, it should be where you're going now. And, you know, I mean, every, you know, it's good to reevaluate those things from time to time, every year, whatever your timeline is. But, you know, I'd still like to be represented by a gallery someday, but <laughs> I, I also love doing all this other stuff that has come up, like teaching things that have come up in the last couple of years and these hotel projects and, you know, things I had never in a million years dreamed I would ever do. So they've been amazing. And God, I would love to go to Paris again. Or if someone wants to send me to Dubai or Singapore, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be on a plane. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. Well, Angie, if you had to start all over again, not that any of us want to, but just for photo world kind of feeling maybe a little stuck and things that they could learn of what they should be doing now, or if they're starting what they can begin with. Can you suggest something that, you know, you would do first when you have to start over on a business? Say you don't have one, but I'll even let you have the same gear and knowledge that you currently have, but you have to start a business over. What would you do first? I get to me, I think so much of photography and I guess if you're talking business wise being successful in business so much of it comes down to marketing and knowing how to, to market yourself to the to the right people it's something I'm not the greatest at and something I'm constantly like learning and trying to steal little bits and pieces from other people I guess it would be figuring out what it is you like to photograph and finding your market finding who that work appeals to and kind of targeting them. If And this is like going at it from a business perspective, not as a, I just love to do this perspective. Like if you're trying to do a business, I guess 
that's how I would approach it. You know, know what you like to do and research who your work fits with, who, who would be a good person to, you know, purchase your work or publish it or, you know, whatever, find who that is, I guess. Yeah, no, that's good. Instead of waiting for your market to find you, go look for them because they're out there. So that's, that's great advice. Do you have one app or internet resource that you think photo world could benefit from knowing about? Um, I don't know that I have one that everybody doesn't already know about. Um, I like Instagram. It's like my latest addiction lately. Not that it's new by any means. Um, I think in the Chicago area, if, if you're around here and we were talking before we got started with recording, um, out of Chicago photography, I think is a, a great local resource in terms of, um, you know, tips on places to shoot, you know, conferences, they're starting up an online school coming up soon. Um, I think it's just a good, good resource locally and, you know, even branching out, you know, further nationally, internationally, whatever. Um, that's a good one. But uh, other than what I think everybody out there already knows about, <laughs> you know, I don't know that I have anything. I do really like um, actually Lenswork, um, their podcast and, and their magazine. That's by Brooks Jensen. Um, it it's focuses more, I guess, on the create creativity side of photography not not the technical stuff his podcasts are great they're short and sweet and good i like listening to him so he's another good very cool and photo world knows well they can find these resources and the links that we've been talking about and uh, the people we've mentioned on the show notes page just go to takingtalkpics.com type in angie in the search bar her show notes will pop right up and you can find all that great stuff there including where to find her work and social links Angie, what is one piece of gear that you could not live without? Don't count your camera and don't count your lenses. What's one other piece of gear that you could not live without? I don't know that I have anything because honestly, that's all I ever shoot with. I occasionally take a flash if I'm doing portraits, but I never shoot with a tripod. Well, not never, rarely shoot with a tripod. So Really? No tripod for your architecture stuff? That's very, crazy. very rarely. So... It says, oh, okay. <laughs> says even more about your work then. What was that? It says even more about your work then and looking at it because I feel like it's all just, man, it must take forever to set up and stuff. And I mean, not that you just run and gun, but if you're not using a tripod, that's like, wow, I can't see that way. <laughs> it's just a whole different game than what I'm used to. So that's really well, cool. When I throw the tripod out there, then I miss what I'm seeing. It frustrates, like, it frustrates me because I'll be framing it, holding my camera, and then I get the tripod out to like set up a shot and it's gone. I'm like, where was I? And I can't get it exactly where I was. So honestly, I have nothing. I, I don't have anything. There you go, photo world. You know, keep it extremely simple. I know. I'm if I'm restricting camera and lenses, then there should be nothing else to talk about. So <laughs> no. Uh, do you have a particular bag that you use? Uh, like a I don't know, a think tank or something like that that you like? Um, honestly, then this is totally a carryover from the portrait stuff. Like I use a Kelly Moore bag. Um, so yeah, I don't, I mean, I have like a little pro backpack, but it's, it's a little big, so I never use it. I actually do need to get a smaller backpack because the, the Kelly Moore bag is breaking my back. I need something <laughs> that's, that's a little more evenly distributing the weight, but yeah, no. <laughs> Keeping it simple. I like it. <laughs> well, Angie, we're about to wrap it up here. But before we go, could you share with Photo World one parting piece of guidance and then the best way that we can reach you, whether it be your website or some sort of social media, and then we'll say goodbye. Um, parting piece of guidance? I, I don't know beyond what I've already already said. Um, keep it simple. <laughs> Just keep repeating that. No, um, that's honestly, honestly, kind of do it for yourself. Do it for fun. Do, do what makes you happy with the photography and stop caring so much about others' opinions. So, yeah, uh, that's about it. But thank you so much for having me. It's, yeah, and where can we find you to see your work and follow what you're doing? Um, my website is probably the best space, so angiemcmonagall.com. I'm on Facebook probably more than the other social media sites, Facebook and Instagram. But I'm on pretty much all of them. <laughs> but... Yeah, I'd say the website just because everything streams through there and that is more filtered as to the best work. So. Yeah, very good. And Photo World, again, we'll have all that on the show notes page. So head over there and take a look. And if you can't find it, there will be a resource to get all of it. 
Angie, I cannot thank you enough for your time today and sharing such great value. Photo World thanks you and happy shooting. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Hey, Photo World, are you loving taking talk pics? Maybe you are starting out or wanting to refine your skills in a new area of your photography. Like I say on the show, we are always learning, and that learning doesn't have to stop. At the College of DuPage, their photography program is amazing. I should know. I'm a former student, and now I'm an instructor at the school. Visit cod.edu forward slash photo for more information on their program. Not local to the Chicago area? That's okay. The College of DuPage photography program is now offering online courses. Just check the course catalog for what fits your schedule. Again, that's cod.edu slash photo for more information. Thank you, Photo World, for tuning in to another great episode here on Take and Talk Picks. It was a pleasure having you, and I'll see you next time.